managing technology. I'll start with a very strong claim that all technology is a prisoner of societal and personal consequences which cannot be controlled no matter what the management regime. When you use the tools of any technology to solve a particular problem you may or may not succeed but what is certain is you unleash completely unexpected phenomena. Now I'll explain what I mean by expanding on the idea of uncertainty in technological systems using an analogy. It concerns the 100% guaranteed universal roach exterminator which really was sold by mail order in the USA to solve the problem of cockroach infestation. Like most modern technological tools, the, the product consists of hardware, software and some documentation, which is the text on the side of the box. The hardware is just a mallet and a block of wood. The software is a list of operating instructions. Step one, catch the cockroach. Step two, uh, place it on the block. Step three, hit it with the mallet. 100% guaranteed, kill cockroaches. Now, step three is relatively straightforward, although it does, of course, depend to a certain extent on step two. Step two. For if the operator is too slow, the cockroach will escape and too fast, and he will hammer his thumb. So, operational guidelines must be assembled. The documentation should help you with this. Naturally, the equipment has to be bought, it has to be maintained, stored, transported. Carcasses must be removed. Hygiene procedures must be developed. No doubt, some company will sell you further tools for these emerging situations. But it doesn't end there. The use of this technology will have unforeseen consequences. Perhaps your pet piranha has a taste for cockroaches. You can save on fish food bills. Your neighbours may complain about the noise you banging all day and all night. Animal rights activists will firebomb your flat and complaining about your cruelty to cockroaches. You may wake up screaming from nightmares about giant cockroaches. As with every other technology, before you know it, the implications are running riot and a highly complex system has exploded onto the scene. Welcome to the real world of phenomena, uh, not function. A world of consequences, not intentions. And you don't need me to tell you that success is judged on consequences, not good intentions. Now, of course, in the software, step two depends on step one. And there we see the fundamental flaw in this ridiculous mallet technology. Because this tool solves absolutely nothing. All along, the real problem was not killing cockroaches, but catching them in the first place. This fact was quietly hidden away in the first step of the software. <laughs> but no doubt, some new trap technology could be developed so that the cockroaches can be put onto the block and hammered. Laughable as this example may be, it, it does teach some salutary lessons about technology in general, and information technology in particular. How many IT applications do you know that solve the wrong problem? Problems are solved because you know how to solve them, rather than because you want or need them solved. And more often than not, even more technology is needed to shore up the non-solution. We all know that the vast majority of software deals with other software not with the management problems at hand. No, no technological.
biological solution is applied in a vacuum. Uh, it interferes with a wide range of human activity systems. We have to perceive the problem. There, there has to be proper management and housekeeping in order to achieve the intended functional aims, uh, taking us from step one to step three. Uh, but at the same time, managers must deal with any implications of its use, avoiding all emergent hazards and all the while profiting from any unexpected opportunities that may arise. You know, suddenly, we're back to step two. These new risks and opportunities must be sensed as, as problems and subsequently solved. And lo and behold, we're back at step one. The feedback loop, which holds the potential of opportunity and hazard, is closed. Some feedback will oscillate and amplify the loop processes, eventually totally destabilizing the system. Now, problems increase inside the loop, but they increase exponentially, as do the technological solutions. We are one step away from chaos. Ultimately, both the sensing of problems and the managing of solutions becomes impossible. And the whole edifice of this technological ideology falls apart. So we have finally discovered that our mallet and block approach is obviously inappropriate. Perhaps a roach motel is far more suitable. Uh, this is a box open at both ends with adhesive surfaces inside which emanate an odor attractive to roaches. As the roach enters it gets stuck to the box and once the box is full of glued chattering roaches it is incinerated, roaches and all. The motel itself of course raises his own questions as for example the suitability of the chemicals being used. They may be carcinogenic, uh, they may be hallucinogenic, they maybe the roaches from next door will be attractive to come and party in your house. Uh, <laughs> there is another lesson from this analogy. Only managers on the basis of personal criteria, balancing advice from their relevant personal networks, uh, suppliers, employers, employees and customers, and factoring in experience can decide which method is most appropriate as they face a world of complexity and uncertainty. <laughs> but do they? More often than not, they do not. Instead, the authority of our scientific society forces them to formulate every new solution in terms of yet more technology. They even sense the situation as being a problem specifically because of the potential offered by technology. <laughs> Give a boy a hammer and he will look for nails. Anyone who manages a computer system will recognize this scenario. The, the self-serving ritual of methodically applying technology takes on a significance far greater than the original problem. The use of method and technology becomes compulsive. Because of this predominant information ideology, initial success with IT can induce the obsessed manager to introduce yet more and more layers of method and technology. Uh, to justify the extra effort and expense, the now neurotic manager will look around for partners in search of synergy, that mystical pot of gold that they learn about on their obsessive, compulsive, neurotic MBA courses. With their mallet technology, they could look to the kitchen and use a meat mallet, a cheese board as the tools, along with a tablespoon to pick up carcasses and a flour sifter to carry mounds of them to a bin. But would you eat food prepared in that kitchen? 
the implication of each layer of technology feeds back into the surrounding human activity systems in the form of new questions about the appropriateness of solutions and then of new problems. Our original clear demarcation of three steps will always collapse in a confusion of multiply overlapping systems. The implication of technology will always feed back in the form of new questions about the appropriateness of applications and of new problems. Uh, complexity increases to a point where utility turns into reliance. Reliance becomes dependence and the law of diminishing returns precipitates a galloping descent into nightmare. Welcome to the twilight zone and the management of technology.